Amen. God bless you and welcome to Unshackled Ministries in the city of Paramount. Praise the Lord for another wonderful Sunday morning in the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. I want to just uh, thank you all for being with us today. Amen. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We give complete control of this service to you, Lord God. We thank you for your divine hedge of protection around our service this morning, that the word of God that goes forth today shall not hit the ground, but shall go and do exactly as you have sent it into our hearts for today, Lord God. And we thank you today, Lord, that the word of God shall not be stolen by any enemy, Lord God, but we will be focused and we will pray that the Holy Spirit will just open our hearts and our eyes and understand your word today, Lord God. Open the scriptures to us, we pray, and we give you all the thanks and the glory in Christ Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Again, I'd just like to give a wonderful uh, um, um, a shout out to, um, to all um, the viewers from uh, YouTube and Facebook, and I pray God has been using our weekly uh, messages to maybe encourage you or bless you in some way. So I just ask the Lord to continue to use this platform and uh, this way to touch you and continue to touch you, your friends and your family in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. God has a wonderful word for you today. And I pray that the Lord will just touch you in that special place of your heart today. And, uh, and it takes us to, to be humble though. So let us humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord whether here in the church um, facility or out there in Facebook or, or YouTube land, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? Praise God. God's word for us today is, is fresh. God's word to us today is anointed and blessed. How many of you believe that? Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a praise offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, did you guys know that the Dodgers won the World Series? Amen. Praise God. And it's wonderful. We got to um, continue to, to, uh, to know that. Amen. That, that we have a good a winning baseball team. How many of you like to be on a, on a winning team? Praise the Lord. Uh, Pastor Anthony got slow on the job. Brother, brother, there he is. Brother Danny. Pastor Anthony got to do that, that stuff. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, if you've got your Bibles, I want to share with you. We're going to go to a second gen to Genesis chapter 2. Amen. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the church, Brother Danny. Uh, please forgive our little kind of doing things, but... Uh, that's, that's the way that's the way we're doing. Amen. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a praise offering for Brother Danny being with us today. <laughs> praise God. The title of our message today is I, I am formed by the hand of God for his purpose. Amen. I am formed by the hand of God for his purpose. Praise God. When you start really thinking about that and understanding that you've been formed by God, amen, and that God is in complete control of all of our lives and our destiny, amen, I believe that, that uh, we'll, we will see things and see ourselves in a different light, amen? And if you trust God, you will see Almighty God working in your life. You will see the miracles happening around you, in you, and, and all through our lives, amen? Because we, we see, and that's what God tells us to do, to acknowledge Him in all things, amen? To acknowledge Him. God made this happen. God caused this to happen. God brought you to church today, amen? God has something for you today. Are you ready to receive it? Amen. Praise God. So... You know, I'm formed, we're formed by the hand of God. And our, our main focus is going to be that God is the potter and we are the clay. Amen? Praise God. But I wanted you to, to see that it didn't just start way back then. Uh, you know, in the Old Testament, you know, it starts here in the beginning. Amen? Because it tells us in, <clears throat> in, in verse 7 of Genesis chapter 2, it says, The Lord God. The Lord God formed the man. The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. 
And the man became a living soul. Amen. The man became a living soul. But in the beginning, God formed us. And the Bible says that he formed us out of the, the clay of the earth, the dust of the earth. He put us together. He put man together. And then he saw that it wasn't good for man to be alone. So he created a woman for him. Amen. A woman to help him. Amen. A woman that they could start and continue to raise up family for the Lord. Amen. And that's exactly the way things went. Praise God. God's plan was in, in motion and, and it continued to go. And uh, we see it. It started with one, then two. And then you can see how much of a population we have in the world today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And today I want to talk to you for a little while on the fact that God is the potter and we are the clay. Sometimes he has to break our worldly vessels and make us over again. How many of you know that? Amen. And I'm glad that it's that way. And I pray you are too. I'm glad that when he saves us, he doesn't just lay us aside and say, well, there's another one that's mine. No, he starts right away working on us to make us better for his use and for his glory. Amen. That's why I titled this, I am formed by the hand of God for his purpose. Are you here with me? And even where you're at today, maybe you're in a job or a profession or whatever you're in. You didn't walk in there, just, just, just walk in there to do it. You had to be formed to do that. If you uh, are a nurse or whatever profession you are out there, you went to school, you went to college, you maybe went to a trade school to learn how to do that. Amen. Or maybe you started in a workplace and you started at the bottom and you watched and you worked your way up, but you didn't know how to do everything that you were doing there at your jobs or your workplaces uh, when you first got the job or went there. Amen. God helped you and the company, excuse me, the company God helped to, um, the company taught you to do things the way they wanted to do them. Amen. So you're being formed all the time. And that's why God tells us to be conformed, conformed into the likeness and the image of Christ Jesus, his son. Amen. That we would start practicing and believing the way that Jesus lived, the way that Jesus walked, what Jesus said, what Jesus did. God is leading us in that direction that we would be conformed into his image, that we would be obedient to God no matter what the cost. Jesus was obedient to God even to the point of death. Amen. And not just death, but the, uh, the shameless death of a cross. Amen? Are you here with me? Because he did that for me and you. Amen? So praise God. Um, he starts working on us as soon as we start to sing. Amen? Idolizing. Uh, <clears throat> I'm afraid that though, like Israel though, many of God's children today find themselves all involved with the things of this world. Amen? And when the things of this world... Start to take control of our lives. Amen. When the things of this world, we start to be obsessed or over consumed with the things of this world. They can take control of you. Idolizing many things. There are many Christians today that are worshiping the pagan altars of materialism. A lot of so-called saved people on Sunday morning, they load up their boat and they head for the lake instead of loading themselves with the things of God and going to the house of God. I heard a man one time say <clears throat> that he's not going to make his children go to church. They could make up their own minds when they were older. But needless to say, neither him nor his wife attended church either. Total ignorance of what God, of what the Bible says. Amen. And what God says. Hallelujah. Do you know why there's such a crowd of rebellious children on our hands today? One of the biggest things is because their parents, their parents didn't bring them up in a good Bible believing church. A great number of parents have never attended church themselves. These rebellious children, these rebellious children have been raised that way. They, they, know, they know no other way. And the parents wonder why they went wrong. Parents, it's so important to be saved and to raise your children in a godly atmosphere, in the things of God. It is so critical and so important because what you're doing today, amen, they're going to follow that example. 
And if you're not giving your lives to the things of God, committing yourselves, devoting yourself to the things of God, and that doesn't mean you can't have fun. That mean, doesn't mean you can't enjoy the things of, of this life. God wants you to enjoy them. Amen? But he doesn't want you to make them an idol in your life. God wants you to have good things. God wants you to have a nice house. God wants you to have cars. God wants you to have furniture and nice things. Amen? But you should not be obsessed and controlled by them. You should always trust and, and thank God for everything you got. And when you get opportunity, you use it for His glory. Amen? Amen. I praise God. You know, when I, I shared a, a while back, you know, when we got our house here and uh, our, bought our house here in, 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 uh, in Bellflower, we sat on the kitchen floor. When they were showing us, you know, that was open house, we sat on the kitchen floor and we prayed that God would give us that house. And we said that we would use it for him. Amen. Well, we did. We got it. We raised our kids. But that house became the first Unshackled Ministries. How many of you know that? Amen. That house became a church. Amen. We were still going to church, but we started having events at our house. Amen. We started the church there as well. We had our church there at the house for about uh, six months, I believe. Amen. And we had a good crowd. We had about 25 to 30 people on a Sunday morning. On a, on a Thursday night, we had people coming. But you see, what I'm saying is, we didn't just want a house to have a house. We want a house to, to be for God. Amen. And to bring up the, the children of God. Amen. Praise God. So we have to remember that. Praise the Lord. Their parents didn't bring them up in a right in a right atmosphere. So... Today we're going to be looking at that. I wanted to throw that at you first because we have to see that there is issues out there. When there's problems out there in the world, we have to see and we have to say, you know what, well, you know, why, why are these things happening? And it's happening because of the fact that we didn't sow the right seed. Amen. Some of us we didn't get we didn't find jesus or jesus didn't find us until way later you know but when we when the lord found us we just started trying to play you know do the right things by getting our children involved in church amen my children gravitated to the church they gravitated so much more than me and even sister martha amen and uh, they were plugged in there all the time and they were always going to church sometimes i have to say wow some of the events i didn't like but I just let them get, get in there. Amen. Praise God. So our scripture, another scripture today is in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, are you in Christ today? Amen. So you're the only ones that we're talking about. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. God made you over. Amen. Hallelujah. You were born one way, but God made you over. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. Amen. Praise God. You're a new creation. God has been working in your life since you got saved. Amen. Javier is not the same guy I used to know before he got saved. He's a different man today. More responsible. Amen. Clean. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you here with me? And it's a wonderful thing to see that, amen, what God can do, amen. And, and, and But we have to understand, you know, that the old has gone, the new has come when God reformed you. We're going to look more than that in a minute. Um, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says this. Praise God. Ephesians 2.10. It says, for we are God's workmanship, amen. When it says that we are God's workmanship, that means that God is still working on you. He's still working on me. Every day, God is still working and forming us. Amen. You know, for what he wants us to do. Praise God. How he wants us to live. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do what? Praise God. It's up there, right? We are God's workmanship created to do what? Good works. Amen. Amen. Good works for the glory of God, which God already has destined, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God has something for you to do, praise God. And we have to be looking for whatever it is that God has 
for us to do. We have to be looking for it. We have to be seeking it. We have to be saying, okay, God, you know, you want me to do this? You want me to do this? And then we have to, you know, get around that fork in the road where are we going to do what God wants us to do or are we going to do what we want to do? Are we going to do what God wants us to or are we going to do what we think, you know, we should do? We should always be trusting God. Amen. And then as I shared for you, shared with you a minute ago in Genesis, it all started in the beginning. God formed us. Amen. Praise God. And then we get to Je Jeremiah chapter 18 in verse 5. Praise God. Let's go there. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah 18, verse 5. Praise God. <clears throat> We're going to start um, reading in, in verse 1, Caesar. Praise God. It says this, and this is what God spoke to Jeremiah. Amen. Jeremiah the prophet. It says, this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. And when something comes from the Lord, we should be willing to accept it, right? Amen. Good morning. Praise God. This is the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house and there I will give you a message. Praise God. Go down to the potter's house and I will give you a message. Do you know what a potter is, my brothers and sisters? A potter is somebody that forms, and I didn't bring him, I wanted to do that, but somebody, you know, somebody that forms even this. They have machines that form these things. They have, they have people that make things on a potter's wheel. Amen. A potter's wheel. Have anybody ever took potting, pottery in school? Praise God. I remember when I went to Downey High School, um, they, um, they um, had a pottery class and I used to go in there and, you know, back in those days I thought I was, you know, like really cool or something, you know, and so I didn't want to get my hands all full of that putty or clay or whatever it was, but, but I started getting into it, you know, and they gave it to me and and I started making and molding this thing and had this wheel and you press it, you put your foot and you keep turning it around and it, you keep forming, you mold it. And I think I, I made a cup or an ashtray or something, but it came out really nice, you know, when I started listening and I didn't worry about it. And I was happy I made, you know, that thing, amen. But there's more to it, to making things like that, amen. How many of you seen those, uh, those big giant, uh, you know, um, pot, pot, pots at like Home Depot or something like that? You know, those are those are things that are they make them out of clay and stuff like that amen praise God <clears throat> he says go down to the potter's house and there I will give you a message praise God how many believe that God has a message for you today I mean if you came over here today God has a message for you God wants to say something to you amen and so he didn't just sit there and sit around and say okay I'll go later I'll go check it out later or whenever I have time I'll go over there the Bible says that he says in verse 3, So I went down to the potter's house and saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping, but the pot that he was shaping, that the potter was shaping from the clay, was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as it seemed best to him. And then the word of the Lord came to me, O house of Israel, can I, can I not do with you as this potter does, declares the Lord? Like the clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hands, O house of Israel. If at any time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, and if that nation I warned repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I planned. And if at another time I announce that this, but basically what I wanted you to see is that, that, <clears throat> God told him, amen, to go there, amen, and that there would be a message for him. And he went on to give him the message, praise God, amen. But he used it saying that here, the important part, he says, is that, that can I not do as this potter does, the Lord says to Jeremiah, amen. Uh, like clay in my hand, of the, like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hands. Amen. And that's where we have to get that from, that we are, God is forming us every day. Amen. Because, you know, um, like, like I was sharing with you, this, this in, in the scriptures here, it says that, that when he started making it, it was marred. That means there was something in it. 
amen, that messed it up. So he had to remake, he made it into something else, amen. And I, I call that like when we were born in the natural world, we were born from our mother and father, amen. God had a diff, another plan, amen, because we were born and we were living in a marred situation, amen, amen, in a marred existence, amen. Until we came to know Christ, and as we came to know Christ, God reformed us, remade us, and he's still doing that, amen. He still keeps us on that wheel. He's still molding, amen, because we are the workmanship of his hands, amen. And we have to continue to allow ourselves to be that workmanship. We can't be stubborn and say this or that. We got to just say, okay, God, whatever you're going to make out of me, praise the Lord, let it be, amen. Hello. And Isaiah says, in, in Isaiah 64, 8, it says, yet, O Lord, you are our father we are the clay we are the clay you are the potter we are all the work of your hand amen, amen. when we start to develop that in our in our thinking and saying god you're you're not you know because I, I i i never feel like you know I'm, I'm better than anybody else or any i just feel i'm a humble person that god is using to do the work that he's called me to do or to hear the cries of his people and be that lending ear for God and also to give them encouragement through prayer and support. Amen. Amen. I had the lady that her son um, just, um, you know, got off the ventilator that we've been praying for. His mother, she calls me up and she says, man, I, I want to pray for you that God keeps using you to hear the prayers of the sick and pray healing over them. Amen. That shocked me. I just said, wow, you know. But then I stopped and I reflected about all the things God is, keeps bringing in front to pray for the sick. Pray for the sick. Pray for the sick. And God is healing them. It's not, you know, it's not just hot air going out. You know, there's mani the manifestation of God's power is real. And it's testimonial. And you can see it really happening out there. Amen. People's lives are being touched. People are rising up from the bed of affliction. Amen. God is doing it. He gets all the thanks and the glory. But we are vessels. Amen. God has formed me. Amen. To, to, to do what he's asked me to do. And that's, that's what I do. Amen. And you as well. I don't just try to carry all that load by myself. You hear me crying out to you. You know, putting that 911 prayer for a man I don't even know. But I just felt compassion for his family. Well, all that's going on. I said, Lord, is you know, because of the way his daughter's. Just, they're growing up women, and you know, um, but they're his daughters, and they just wanted to be next to their dad, and they hugged him, and, and they didn't follow the protocol that we have here today of wearing the mask, because dad, it's safe to be around dad, amen? Well, dad had the COVID. His family, daughters got sick, but everybody's getting well, praise amen. God, amen? Good is coming out of a bad situation, amen? amen. Praise God. So we are, we are the work of God, as it says in Isaiah. And then Isaiah 45, verse 9, it says, because <clears throat> this is where it gets a little bit, uh, a little bit, you know, um, how we really are. Because even though we know that, that we are the work of God, sometimes we don't want to conform into what he's trying to make us into. Amen? Sometimes we don't want to let the changes come upon us. Sometimes... We get stubborn. Sometimes our pride rises up. And sometimes we'll even say, well, I'm not going to listen to the, to, the, to the minister, you know, because he's just a man or she's just a woman, you know. God is my judge. Well, God is your judge, amen. But I want you to know that God has sent people to be over the church, amen. He's ordained them. He's put them in that position, you know. And, but in all positions, you have good and bad. You have... You have um, some that are there not for the right purposes and reasons amen but you shouldn't throw all godly ministers and pastors and that with all those other ones that are just doing things amen? amen praise god because god has given you men and women with godly concern and compassion to be over the church amen praise god but here in, I, in isaiah 4, 45 verse 9 it says Whoa! Remember what I told you the other day? When it says whoa, that's what, that should give us attention. Amen? That should give us that place when we start looking, you know, when your parents, uh, when my parents said one thing and they said it in a certain way, 
you know that, hey, I better get serious. They're serious. Amen? Because, you know, sometimes we try to, we try to stretch and see how much we can get away with, right? Hello? Kids start learning that when it's, when it's early. Amen? How much we can get away with. But, you know, we have to um, um, understand that when it says, whoa, when God says, whoa, open up your ears, open up your hearts and your eyes. He says, woe to him who quarrels with his maker. Amen? It's not, it's not wise to quarrel with God about what he's doing in your life. Woe to him who quarrels with his maker. To him who is but a potsherd among the potsherds on the ground. Does the clay say to the potter, why are you making me? Does your work say he has no hands? Amen? No, we should never say those things to God. Amen? We should never say those things to God because we must believe that God is in control. He knows what he's doing. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Romans 9.21 says this. Does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay some pottery for noble purposes and some for common use? Amen. And you know that we have... You know, uh, there's there's folks in their house. They have your regular plates and spoons and bowls that you use just on a regular everyday thing, right? But you also have in your house the plates you use and the spoons and the bowls that you use sometimes when you have guests. Amen. Some people get so, you know, into it that they have silver plates, silver spoons, and they have collections of this and that. Amen. Um, some some they use it for different things. Amen. And uh, but. Um, but that's what God is saying here is that doesn't he have the right to use some for this purpose and for that purpose. Amen. Praise God. I wanted to just quickly though, because we're looking at God and knowing that we're on the potter's wheel. Say potter's wheel. Potter's wheel. We're on the potter's wheel and God is forming us. You're being formed today. Amen. But you have to understand about something about clay, the thing that gets formed, amen? Um, in, 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 in Proverbs 28, 13 and 14, it says this, because we must be free. Say this with me, say, I must be free, must be free. from impurities. Impurities. impurities, praise God. Um, Proverbs 28, 13 says, he that covereth his sin shall not prosper. Amen. When you sin and you know your sin, either intentionally or unintentionally, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Amen. That's a relationship with God because you know it. Amen. Hallelujah. And I know sometimes as we go, like I said, as we were young, we tried to push the limits. You know, hey, if I don't say nothing, nobody will ever know. How many of you know that a lot of times it always comes back and, 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 and it finds you. Amen. Or your brother and sister that said they weren't going to tell on you, they tell on you. Amen. Uh, how many of you ever had brothers and sisters that told on you? Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, that happens. You know, it happens in family. Amen. But it says here, He that covereth his sin uh, shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh, forsaketh them shall have mercy. Happy is the man that feareth always, for, but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. Amen. When a potter, when a potter is modeling the clay, he's doing two things. He's working the clay to work out any tiny air pockets. This is when he's doing, he's working on the potter. He's trying to get the air pockets out of the way because he knows when the pot is fired in the kiln, they will burst and destroy the pot if he doesn't get all the air pockets when he's molding the clay. Amen. So you got to pray, God, get all the air pockets out of me when you're molding me. Amen. He's also searching for any tiny pebbles that will weaken and blemish the finished vessel. Amen. Impurities. Air, air will mess it up. Things that get stuck in there will mess it up. I kind of, when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about, that's why Sister Martha, when she's, when she's getting ready to cook pinto beans, she goes through all the pinto beans and she goes little by little and she's taking out all the little rocks and all the little things that are in there. Amen. She's, so we can eat it. Without breaking our teeth on a little rock. Amen. 
I was just thinking about what the story your mom told me, Amber, when she tried to make them the first time. <laughs> uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Um, hallelujah. So that's why God, when he's on there, he's not just throwing it. He's not just throwing the clay out there and, and, and just, you know, a bubble of clay or ball of clay. You know, he's got it. He's working it for a purpose. He's getting the air bubbles out of there and, and the other things that are going to cause problems. Amen. And, and sin always makes our hearts hard and unpliable. So we must be in cooperation with the potter. Amen. When God is trying to work in your life, you have to be in cooperation. Amen. Like we've been blasting about the miracles of God and the things. You've really been seeing them happen. Amen. Now you can say, oh, it's just, um, what do they say? Just happens. You know, just whatever. I'm giving glory to God. These are miracles. Yeah, they probably, maybe some of them could have happened just they were going to happen anyways, but I don't know. But I, right now I know that we lifted up them in prayer and God did miracles in their lives. Amen. Now they may not acknowledge them as miracles, amen. But still, if man was saying they were going to die and things all of a sudden changed, are you here with me? Amen. Praise God. How many of you want God to make you over today? Amen. amen. How many of you know you got some impurities in you? How many of you know you got some little air pockets in you? Amen. Amen. You got some little pebbles in there. But you know, it's not going to feel good, but God can take them out right now. He can rip them all out. Amen. And he can massage it. He can massage you and get those air pockets out. Right, Sister Maria? Amen. Praise God. Sin always makes the heart, sin always makes the heart, the heart hard and unpliable. Amen. And, and, and we don't want our hearts to get hard. We want to say, God, use me. God, mold me. God, shake me. We must be in cooperation with the potter. We must be in cooperation with what God is doing in our lives. Hello. First John 1 John 1.9 says, if we confess our sin, he's faithful to forgive us of our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, all air pockets and all impurities as he's molding you. And another thing that, the, that the, the clay must be, when the potter's molding it, the clay must be centered on the wheel. It can't be on this side of the wheel. It can't be on this side of the wheel. It has to be right in the center of the wheel. Are you here with me? In Romans 9, 19, uh, 19b and 21, it says, For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but O man who art Thou that repliest against God, shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Has not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Amen? Praise God. The potter has the sovereign right to break the vessel and to start all over. Amen. Some of you, God's had to do that. I know that in my own life, there's been times in my Christian journey that God's had to give me to the place to break me. Amen. So that I could, you know, get focused more on what he wanted to do with me. Amen. Praise God. And that I'm meaning, you know, when God wanted me to let go of working in my secular job. Amen. I was, I was, no, no, that was, that was my... That was like security for me having my job and being able to do the church too. Amen. But God didn't want me to do that. Amen. And things started to change. Things started to happen. Amen. And I start. I remember because I remember right when God when God wanted me to do that. I had shared a message about when Jesus walked and He called His disciples when they were fishermen, and He said that He was going to make them into something else. Amen. And I and I just I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't let go of my job. Well, guess what? God took the job. And then what did I do? Well, I thought, okay, well I'll just go get another job. <laughs> And I got another job. Then I got diagnosed with the tumor in my brain. And I still didn't want to let go of my job. Amen. Then I got out of the brain tumor and got back to, to getting strong. I went back to work. I didn't last long. 
you know. Till finally Sister Martha see me getting up every day and going to work and she seen everything I was going through from the after effects and the trauma of the surgery and and what I had to deal with with people because when you're in a managerial position, you have to deal with a lot of people issues, a lot of people personalities, a lot of different things like that. And sometimes that can be very rugged on you during the course of the day, amen, and for me it was. That's when Sister Martha finally said, you know what? We're gonna have faith and trust in God. I want you to just leave your job and just focus on the church. And even then I was a little resistant, but we did. And we're here, it's been maybe, maybe 17 or 18 years. And brothers and sisters, we're not begging bread. Are you here with me? Now my poor wife has to get up every day and, and, and go over there and you know, I have to focus on what I have to do, you know, to get things ready for services or helping people, amen. But you know, God had to break me is what I'm trying to say. Cause I wouldn't let go, amen. And that's why I would encourage you when God wants to do something with you, don't argue with him. Don't argue with him. Let go and let God. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the potter has the sovereign right to break the vessel and to start all over. Love motivates the potter even when he crushes the clay and starts to remold it all over. Amen? How many of you feel like your lives have had to be remolded and started all over? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. If the clay should slide over to the edge of the spinning table, it might spin off or it will spin off. Amen. So the clay needs to be right in the middle. You need to stay focused on the things of God. We need to be in dead center on the potter's wheel in his hands. In God's hands. Amen. The potter's wheel is constantly turning. Turned by the, the potter's feet. Like the circumstances of our lives. The potter is actively involved in our life. Trying to get our cooperation to shape us for the good work that he has for us to do. Amen. When we become off centered, When we get thrown off and fall into some hard circumstances of life. A clay must always stay centered and focused upon the Lord, no matter what experience or trial comes into our life. We still have to trust God. During this time that we're going through right now, we have to keep our eyes on God. And that's what the church has been trying to do. Continue to stay focused, taking care of the people of God. Amen? Hallelujah. To keep our hearts ensured that God is for us and not against us, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Amen? Because God has lifted up a standard and God is here to protect all of us. Amen? Amen? Even if we have to endure or go through some of the circumstances of what's going on today, God will raise you up. Amen? Amen. God will bring you through it. Praise God. Amen. And then again, the third thing that the, about the clay is that clay needs to be responsive to the potter's touch. It needs to be pliable. It needs to be moldable. Are you here with me? And it has to respond to his touch. He knows. He gets so close to the clay. He knows what's inside of it. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Like 1 Peter 5, 6 says, and this is, you know, because you know, we're using clay as a metaphor and example. Amen? Because that's what God used it for to teach us in here. Amen? Um, 1 Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time. Amen. Humble yourselves. God, do with me whatever you want to do. You want me to read my Bible? You want me to pray more? You want me to go to church more? You want me to take half of my food and give it to the poor? Amen. Whatever you want me to do, Lord. I'm willing to be used by you because you have a purpose for me. Amen. Lord God. Amen. Praise God. So a potter must master the clay before he can start to form it. Mastering the clay is when the potter brings pressure to the clay and slowly it starts to take form. You know, he has to put pressure on it. Hello? You just can't put your hands on it like this and ooh, whatever comes out, comes out. God is too smart to do that. Amen. God is forming you for a purpose. 
Even these young kids, God is forming them for a purpose. Even right now, God is forming them. Who's he, who's, who's he using to form them? Their mothers and their fathers. Amen? Are you here with me? They are, they're the clay. And so when they grow up and they get to an age of accountability, amen, they'll either have been formed in the things of God or they've been formed in the things of the world because the parents let something else form their children. Amen? amen. And that's what's happening today. Amen? We must let God form our children and we must take responsibility for that. Amen? amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So he must bring pressure to the clay. And slowly it starts to take form. The potter adds water. Keep, keep, keeping pressure with his hands to the, to the clay. Starts, the clay starts to respond to the, pot, to the potter's touch. Amen. Praise God. We see in verse 4 of Jeremiah 18. How the clay was marred. And the potter had to begin again. But the pot. He was shaping from the clay was marred in his hand so the potter formed it into another pot shaping it as it seemed best to him amen god knows god the potter knows us better than we know ourselves how many of you know that even right now you may not you know if you're hearing what the lord the lord is saying to you today that the holy spirit is bringing to your attention today god is saying let me work in your life let me work in your life. Let me work in your home. Let me work with your children. Let me work in your job with you. Let me work in your finances. Hello. Let me work on your health issues. Praise God is saying that to us every day as we grow and as we develop and as he continues to form us. We need to allow God to continue doing what he's doing because he knows us better than we know ourselves he know what tomorrow is going to bring and god's trying to prepare you today for what's going to come tomorrow and you know and and challenges do come unexpectedly or maybe you know they're going to come amen but challenges do come on a daily basis amen praise amen. god you love the lord today amen. hallelujah give him a praise offering And like I shared with you in my situation, if we are marred or flawed, the potter may have to break us to get our attention. Amen. And that's what a lot of brothers and sisters that come to the Lord, they don't understand. They'll start going through a lot of stuff. Amen. And then they'll start blaming the circumstances, even the people around them, family, wives, children. They'll start looking at the person and saying, you're all messed up, you're all this. Well, yeah, they got problems, but they need God's help. Amen. Amen. We got issues. You got issues, I got issues. And I, I, I've come to the place where I want God to help me with my issues. I want him to make me a, a better man. And not just a man, but a man of God. Amen. Amen. God has returned uh, and given to me back, you know, uh, he given me a destiny. Amen. Hallelujah. And he's given me a purpose. So we must allow ourselves to be used by God. And that's going to take molding. That's what the church is about. If you look at the church, it's really a big potter's wheel. And people are being molded every day. Not just individuals, but the church as a whole. Amen. Praise God. 1 Peter 1 6 says, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine. Amen. Genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Amen. So when God is having to mold us and the things that we're going through, amen, even today with, with, um, with what's going on right now, amen, and you can hear, and I always say, you know, I'm not going to be stubborn about what's going on or rebellious against it. They've picked up the volume. It's a lot more people getting sick. A lot more people are dying, amen, um, and that's why we need to to lift up our awareness and uh, I, last last week I believe it was when 
I told Sister Martha before we started hearing all these things on the news, I told her just, you know, let's, let's not, you know, it's, time has gone by, so we've, we've kind of dropped our guard in different areas. Amen. Let's go back to original and, and start remembering things. Amen. Doing the things we did because God has used that to get us to where we're at today. Amen. Praise God. And, um, and be strong and trust Him. Amen. Let's never forget our great potter is in full control of our day. Amen. Praise God. And Romans, like I said, Romans tells us that, that, that God has, you know, He can change. You know, He can change the pottery and make some for, for noble purposes and some for common use. Isaiah 29, 16 says this. Isaiah 29, 16 says, You turn things upside down as if the potter were thought to be like the clay. Shall what is formed say to him who formed it, he did not make me? Can the pot say of the potter, he knows nothing? Can you stand up today and say that God didn't create you? Can you stand up today and say that God doesn't know anything? No, we can't. Amen? God is in full control. So we're foolish when we allow ourselves to think such things. To say such things, amen, that the things of God, they don't mean nothing. They, they know that God can't do nothing. God is in control, brothers and sisters. He who formed man also formed the universe. He who formed man also formed the earth. Amen. And all that we see out there, praise God. Hallelujah. Philippians 1.6 says this. It says, being confident of this, that he, you got to be confident that what God has started in your life, he's going to get it to the final place. Amen. Right. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Are, are, did you hear that? Until the day of the return of Christ, God is going to be working in our lives. On me, he'll be working on me. If, he, if, he, if I don't, you know, you know, go first. I know that until I go, God is going to be working on me. Are you here with me? Yes. And it says he will continue to be working on us. Amen. But we have to be pliable. We have to be humble hearted. We have to say, God, it's your way. God, do what you want to do. Help me. Help me to hear you better. Help me to understand you better. Help me to seek you in a harder way. Amen. Hello. Has anybody been looking for something lately and it's hard to find? Anybody? Anybody? Praise God. You, you put a lot of effort into seeking some things, don't you? Well, that's you should put double that effort in seeking God. Amen? Not just for a thing. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Psalms 100, 100 verse 3 says this. Praise God. Psalms 100 verse 3 says this. No, no, that the Lord is God. Brother Javier, know this. The Lord is God. Amen. Brother Alvin, know this. The Lord is God. Amen. Amen. Juju, the Lord is God. Amen. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us. And we are His. Amen. We are His people. The sheep of His pasture. Amen. And now I want to share a wonderful scripture with you that just blessed me so much. Amen. Isaiah 45, 11. Praise God. I hope I'm not giving you too many scriptures. Amen. Hallelujah. Some people say I give too many scriptures, but you know what? Praise God. It just gives more credence that I'm just preaching the word of God. Amen. Hello. This is what the Lord says, Isaiah 45, 11. The Holy One of Israel and its maker concerning things to come. Do you question me about my children? 
or give me orders about the work of my hands? It is I who made the earth and created mankind upon it. My own hand stretched out the heavens. I marshaled their starry host. And what got me right there so much right there is because you got so many people that question us about our faith. Why do you believe or this or that? Why do you go to church? Why do you tie? You know what? God created me this way. And nobody has the right to question you or me as children of God. You are children of God. You are saved. You are, you, you, you've inherited eternal life. You are citizens of heaven. Amen. Praise God by faith. Amen. And that's who you are. And you don't allow nobody to steal your identity. Amen? Amen. Although there is many identity fraud going on out there, you don't let the devil come in here and try to tell you that you're not who you are. You're a child of God and God is forming you. And you may not be perfect yet. You may not even be next to perfect right now. But God is working on you. Amen. And God will make things better. Amen. Amen. But we have to keep in our hearts what the Bible says. You know, it says, be ye perfect for I am perfect. Be ye holy, for I am holy. You see, God would not give us targets to go after or goals to achieve, amen, if it weren't possible. If he's telling us to do it, it has to be possible. Amen? Maybe not in the eyes of man, maybe not in the eyes of people, but we don't live to, to try to um, to um, you know, go by what other people say. Amen. You live for God. You know in your heart how real you are. Amen. God is real in your life. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And last of all, I want to end with this. Mark, uh, Matthew 4.19. Praise God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. It says, Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. You see, Jesus told them when they became, I'm going to make you into something else. Did they argue about it? They were fishermen. They had a profession. Did they argue about it and say no? No, Jesus says, I'm going to make you into something else. You know what they did? They got up and followed him. Amen. Let's do it. Let's do it. Amen. 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 Praise God. That's why, you know, we got some kind of, you know, we, you know, um, this, this is, you know, God forgive me. Um, but we have some in, the, in Christianity that don't believe in the life changing power of God. Some people believe, don't believe that a drug addict can become a, you know, a person hooked on heroin, cocaine, meth, whatever there is out there these days. Amen? That God can't use them. God can use them. Amen. Some people believe that a person that that uh, has been, uh, you know, convicted of a crime or or has been in prison, that God can't use them. They're, you know, it's not, you know, you know, God can touch those. Lives. I have so many brothers and sisters, pastors, excuse me, pastor brothers and sisters. That are ex-cons. Been in jail. Did a crime. Amen? But they're not that same person no more. Because God reformed them. God changed them. He formed them into the men and women of God that they are today. And many of them lead big powerful churches today. Are you here with me? Amen. So anything is possible with God. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's women that are in high places in the work of God in the churches, amen, that used to be out there in the streets. But God has changed their lives. Amen. You see, God has called us and God has a purpose for us, amen? amen. Hello? Praise God. How many of you believe that today? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You love the Lord today? Praise God. Did the Lord give you a message today? Amen. Well, I want you to stay with this message. Amen. It says, I am formed by the hand of God for his purpose. Amen. 
I am formed by the hand of God for his purpose. Are you formed for God's purpose today? Are you allowing God, amen, to do what he needs to do? It will make you into a person that's different from the person you see in the mirror today. Amen. amen. And change will start in here. Because like I've said before, we're all good at making ourselves look good on the outside. But it's what's going on on the inside is what really counts. Your thoughts. Amen. What comes out of your mouth. Now, if we allow God, more miracles are going to happen for you, Sister Rosa. Amen. I believe that. More miracles, great miracles. People are not going to even believe where he's brought you from. Amen. Amen. And then you're going to go back and be the light of God in Peru. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So that's, that's having a vision. God, I want you to change me. Not just to change me, but to change me so that I could help somebody else. When, when, when God called the disciples and he started to form them, he was forming them for a purpose. Because they were going to be the next generation to take the word of God to the rest of the world. Amen. They were going to be the next generation that were going to continue to do the work of God, touch people, lead people to salvation. Heal the sick and cast out devils. Hello? And they did it. Praise God. But we have to believe. And we have to be a church as a whole that believe that nothing is impossible with God. And God can change anybody. Amen. If he changed the Apostle Paul. Amen. He can change the hardest, the hardcore criminal or or, or, or gang member, amen? amen, or drug addict. He can change them. But we have to believe that. God can make a better America. God can make a better Los Angeles. And all those people can be parts and instruments for God as well. Amen? amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Praise God. You love the Lord today? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. God has something big for you, Sister Maria. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. Something awesome. But we have to see it by faith. God is a great planner, organizer, developer. Amen. And God has a vision for your life. Ask God to show you his vision. Amen. So that we can let go of our vision. Amen, Sister Amber. Praise the Lord. Um, let's uh, give opportunity right now for those that maybe they don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Maybe they want to be that chunk of clay that God throws on the potter's wheel today. So if you're out there in Facebook land or YouTube land or you hear this message, I want to give you a chance to ask Jesus into your heart. First of all, it takes confessing and repenting and asking God, and he will come in. He says that he stands at the door and knocks. And if we answer the door and let him in, that he will come in and sup with us. So today, if you're out there and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I just pray that you would hear and maybe say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I repent of my sins. I'm sorry for having lived a life without you or a life without really knowing you. But today I acknowledge that I know you. I believe that you came to seek and save the lost. I believe that you came to seek and save me. So I ask you today, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I believe that you died on the cross for the forgiveness of my sins. I believe by the stripes that were laid on your back that I'm healed and I'm delivered from whatever life controlling substance is controlling my life right now. I believe that you died and you were buried, but on the third day you rose from the grave to live forevermore, Lord Jesus. 
So right now, Lord Jesus, I thank you for coming into my heart. I thank you for my new life. And I thank you that I am on the potter's wheel and that you are beginning to form me into who you created me to be, truly be. And I give you all thanks and glory and praise for this. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. And when uh, we believe that, you start doing that out there. You start telling people to know Jesus, too. And you can lead them in a prayer just like that. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, for all of our friends on YouTube and Facebook, God bless you. And we'll see you again next Sunday. Remember to like and subscribe. Blessings.